Hey everyone, how you doing today? I thought I'd show you some updates on a bunch of stuff and I was kind of looking at some other uh, older builds and trying to trying to answer some comments uh, that, that came up on certain uh, creations as well. Uh, to start with though, I did get this uh, Helios MSC2 uh, for Reforge Eden 2 out to the workshop a few days ago already. And you can get this uh, if you go to the Helios MSC2 RE post. There's a link in there to go to the RE2 version of the ship. And that's what we're looking at right here. So I did take the advice on the last video, the last time I showed this ship, uh, I had some turbines installed and it can hold uh, a full load of uh, turbines in the ship in the engineering areas. But I ended up removing those uh, to uh, save that CPU so I could use it for more thruster upgrades. So final spec wise, um, don't mind the CPU here. I got a shield part in it. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, it's, it's under uh, the 800,000 CPU. I'll show you what I'm talking about with the shield part, too. That was part of a comment. Um, but uh, stat-wise, it did get uh, spiffed up here in the, its, uh, it, its motion. Essentially, I added a little bit more to strafing, uh, upgraded the uh, lift thrust a little bit and the reverse thrust, as well as a little bit more on the forward thrust. Uh, so... And don't, and again, don't mind the CPU. I got a shield part in here at the moment, and that's why it's over uh, CPU. And that was uh, basically another comment. If I get down into the engineering areas of the ship here, uh, I think it's this side where I put the. It was brought up that the shield parts has had changed sizes. In comments, and that that's true on the uh, on the large shield part. I didn't really know what to do about it, so basically I was kind of placing the uh, the brand new large shield which is considerably smaller than what it used to be. It used to be uh, five by five by four, and now it is, uh, uh, well, what is this? Like three, three by three by four, something like that. So it is it is a lot smaller. Uh, unfortunately, I really didn't know what to do with the rooms though. It's like, uh, yeah, these rooms are made to fit the older shield part here and they're bigger, uh, but, uh, you know, what am I going to do about it at this point in time? I, I sort of built out the whole setup here to hold that in a, a full-size fusion reactor. And really the only thing I could do is like put in panning blocks around it to make the, the room space smaller. But uh, other than that, I just restructured the whole thing. But then the, the fusion reactor doesn't fit in the same uh, space setting that the, uh, the the big shield parts uh, would fit in. So essentially I didn't change it. Um, it would just add to the cost of the ship and it won't really accomplish anything. So there's obviously plenty of room in these uh, large shield rooms to put in the new large shield as well. So it's not going to cause any problems. It just doesn't form fit anymore. But uh, it's, it's, it's good to know though. I will definitely take that into account moving forward on any new creations that would have uh, large shield parts in them uh, to make the, uh, the rooms the right size for the new parts. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it on the Helios. It is out there and there'll be a link in the video description as well. So you can go grab this from the Steam Workshop if you do want the RE2 version of the ship. Uh, I think it should work out pretty good. Um, again, it did lose its uh, solar energy or res residual energy uh, right off the gates. It had 44 installed solar panels on the RE1 version of the ship. Uh, those are gone, so you'd need more CPU to put in turbines. If you do put in the full load of turbines, which would be four large turbines and four small turbines, um, again, in the engineering rooms, you'll see them kind of up in the, uh, the top part of these, uh, both sides of the engine, uh, both engineering areas, I should say, uh, for the small and large turbines. Uh, you would actually get more uh, power than you would with the 44 solar panels. Um, the numbers actually come out a little bit better, but again, it's going to take some more CPU. So the next thing, uh, I did obviously get this... <laughs> Uh, Carapace C2X out to the workshop uh, for Reforging 2 as well. So if you want to check that out, it is up there. Um, I won't cover that too much. I kind of showed that quite a bit before. And uh, it's pretty pretty much the same as what it was before. I think there's a couple more little tweaks. And I had some LCDs, uh, a few LCDs for like uh, some things. I ended up skipping the um, Info LCD on this one because it really has hardly any parts to place. It just it's not like the Helios that has bazillions of parts you can place. Uh, this one's uh, was really tight on space, so I couldn't like add in a bunch more things. And it's basically uh, even some of the areas that it does have, like up above here. Here, let me get some fuel in this thing. Um, 
I just said I wasn't going to look at this tonight. Uh, yeah, you got some room up here. Like, you could maybe add some more generators or even a couple quantum cores or stuff like that. There's little compartments in the ship. Um, I think this is pretty self-explanatory for constructors, deconstructors on either side here. I did uh, have to strip it down to one advanced constructor, which kind of sucked. But uh, in the end, the, uh, the CPU on this balanced out. It could actually get, I believe, a small constructor in here, too. There's a, uh, no, it can't. No, it can't. It's, it's got like less than 2,000 CPU left over. So anyway, it is a Core 7 build, and that's how it ended up to be. So moving on, uh, I was asked some questions about uh, some other creations, too, and then I brought in some older creations. We're going to take a look at some of this stuff. Uh, so here's the GigaCore EX2. This was a very, very old build, and I was asked a couple times, a few times, actually, over, over time, if I ever had any plans to, like, rebuild this ship for the modern version of the game. Um, and... I thought I would investigate it. So I basically, I spawned it in and I, I've been taking like a good look at it, trying to figure out what I, you know, what would I do or, with the ship and how it would work out and things like that. And I'm kind of, I'm, I'm kind of mixed on this one. See, this ship I built, uh, man, a long, long time ago, like Alpha 7 time frame around there. Um, and it was after I discovered that you could copy and paste parts and rotate them. I thought that was really cool, and I got excited, so I came up with this idea to build this this drop ship, or this ship that would come down to the ground, kind of like this invasion sh uh, ship of, of sorts. Um, and I started out building a thruster housing, like a single thruster housing, and the idea was it would have four direction thrust on the housing. So basically, you got uh, up and down, and then two directions, like, you know, uh, uh, that side and this side basically and then i uh, I, I build up the whole thing and it would uh, uh they were designed to hold the generators for the ship and everything in it and then i uh, copied and pasted this while rotating at 90 degrees to the four corners of where the ship was going to be and then i built the ship to fit that um in between there now the big problem with the giga core that i have is the layout i think kind of yeah it's not a good layout i don't think i like the i love the pass through hangar um, although I did encroach on that space quite a bit over here on these, uh, these side docking bays, but I did like the idea of the hangar that went right through, and it's also running the, the really big hangar doors, the 13 by 7 doors here, so it's, it's a, it's a decent sized hangar, um, but then I had these two side areas, and at the time I built everything in symmetry, so basically these side areas are just kind of these, uh, elongated, uh, dispersed farming areas that are all over the place. Uh, there's like three sets of grow plots on one side, and then you can walk to the other side of the ship, and there's three more sets of grow plots on that side. Um, and I was basically, I didn't know what to do with the space. Back in the day, there was hardly any other parts put in a ship. Um, now there's tons of stuff. And I didn't really think about asymmetrically uh, building anything either. Um, that just, uh, I wasn't that, that great with the blocks at the time, and it took a long time to even build this ship and try to get it worked out, even though I copied and pasted parts of it. Uh, it was just kind of, um, yeah, I didn't do it. Anyway, I didn't. I never liked the layout on the ship, basically. Um, and I'm thinking it could be salvaged, though. Uh, it's just the whole thing on the interior would have to be asymmetrically done. Like one side would have your production, farming, all your utility stuff, you know, where the player would be. Um, and then the other side would be like engineering, so it could hold generators and shield parts and turbines and all that stuff. That would make a lot more sense on the ship and it would make it more interesting to walk through as well and keep everything kind of isolated on one side. But at the end of the day, though, I just, you know, I'm like looking at this thinking, well, if I were to either redo this or build something new like this, um, that is a big project and this thing is going to need a ton of everything i'm gonna have to like rebuild these thruster housings they're obviously not set up to fit the kind of uh, size thrusters it would need one other scary factor on the ship too because the overall point of it is to be a uh, drop ship it means it would need a, he a lot of thrust uh for both lift and forward thrust and you know whatever else you can squeeze in there and it just means it's already going to put it at a very high cpu level without really doing much else with it. Um, and that kind of scares me a little bit too. Um, now, one other thought that I had, why I've got a Helios module chilling out over here is I was like, well, you know, if I did build a new version, how 
would it be possible to actually add in some Helios module bays on the sides instead of these these uh, kind of strange small HV bays that it has on the sides? And then I uh, spawned one in to get a good look at its size, and I'm like, oh my goodness, uh, those things are pretty big, aren't they? And uh, it would have to be a lot bigger ship to be able to do the Helios modules on the side, even two of them. And that's what I was thinking. Basically, you got a pretty wide hangar going through the middle, and then you'd have a module on each side of that. Um, and that would just make a ship super wide, and then I would want to make it proportionally longer. So basically a big feature creep to make it look right again, and then uh, or, or just uh, a build creep. So uh, then it would be uh, probably a very high size class and uh, very expensive on CPU. And I still don't know if the layout's really going to work out very good because this ship had another issue that I didn't really think about when I was building it. And especially if it was asymmetrically done, like say you had all your production over here on this side and it was laid out nicely for that. Still getting up to the bridge on this ship is like the bridge is way up there. So you got to like kind of catch some kind of walkway path to go. Uh, oh, not even that way. Um, all the way up to the, the bridge section from over here. It could be done, um, but it's like, I don't know. So anyway, um, I, I, I kind of kind of got a mixed feeling on it. I'm trying to choose my next uh, larger build, uh, essentially what I want to do. And this was in the uh, the running of like trying to redo this. And I'm I don't know. It's, it would be a lot a lot of work, and I don't know if I'm gonna like the end result. Um, I always thought the ship kind of looked neat because it's really unique looking. <laughs> And I did like this uh, this uh, kind of inverted cockpit area. I thought it was pretty immersive. And at the time when I built this ship, too, I did not know how to tint that glass either. Uh, literally. Um, so I learned that since then. But, uh, yeah, I had no idea when I built it. Um, it's not very obvious, you know, to new players that you can uh, change your tint of the glass. Um, you just have to read the tooltip description on the multi-tool and just randomly try it on a piece of glass to find out someone told me about it over time and that's that's when i learned i thought it was uh greatest thing since uh sliced bread at the time but uh anyway so mixed mixed thoughts on this one it just i don't know but i have really thought about uh next major project and i'll uh, talk about that in a second here um so moving on i was asked about some other things too and that's why i got a bunch of stuff spawned out i was asked about if i'm in a uh, get going with this building or finish up this uh, resort building, um, get it textured and stuff like that. And I really should. I mean, I, uh, I spent some time building what's here and I like it. It's just my big problem with anything like this is like, what, what are you going to do with it? You know, it's, it, it, it totally would be an awful player base. It's not set up for a player base at all. Uh, the only real thing that it could serve a function to in the game is being like a POI. But it has problems with that, too, because it's, well, it's big, um, and it's above ground. And with POIs, there are limitations on what you're supposed to be able to do with a POI. Like, uh, th the smallest type of POI sh sh would be uh, above ground planet side on, on the official rules on how big of size class you can go with those things. Now, right now, this building is sitting at size class uh, 6 with zero uh, interior, uh, no interior at all done on this thing and it's got a gigantic interior on it um and you could make one heck of a poi out of it i mean it could have multiple floors and all over the place and be quite the uh excursion but i believe if it was all finished off on the inside first it would take a long time to do it um especially if it was nice and detailed and everything and number two it would be so high on size class that it would probably cause performance issues um, especially if I added in lighting and all the kind of stuff I'd want to add into a POI to make it look neat and stuff on the inside. So I'm, I'm kind of like torn on this one on what I want to do with it, but I, I really do want to finish it up one of these days. It's just I got like bazillions of hours of texturing and things to do on it. And then when it's all said and done, it's like, what am I going to do with it after that? You know, um, so it's kind of like, ah. Uh, I don't know. I love to build architecture and buildings and things like this. I wish there was some kind of better use for something like that in the game. Right now, it's basically just to take, you know, if it was all textured off, it's like it's meant to look at. And that's and that, that's really it. It doesn't serve a function in the game. So anyway, so again, on this one, too, kind of got mixed feelings on what I want to do with this. Again, it would be a huge time sink trying to finish it off. It uh, Building the hole like this, it took a little bit, but... 
uh, compared to doing the interior or even part of the interior on a build like this, it would take a lot longer to pull that off. And again, you know, if it served a great function, I would have no problems with it, but I don't know what to do with it, honestly. So I'm kind of sitting on that one for now, too. Uh, this little miner too, I'll probably get this released one of these days. It does work. This is the, uh, the four drill uh, Scarab SMX. I have not put it to the workshop yet. Instead, I put that three drill uh, Scarab out to the workshop instead of this one because it had the guns and stuff. But this one was a little bit better miner, a little bit more mining capacity, plus four drills. So I think it, it does a little better job of its sole purpose of uh, being an SV miner at a low tier. But the other, uh, the other miner I just thought was a little more useful overall uh, because it could also uh, be upgraded to a shield and it had uh, a couple guns on it so you could shoot some drones and stuff too. So, uh, so one of these days I will get this out to the workshop though. It shouldn't take very long. It's tiny. I don't have to take too many pictures or have too, uh, too big of an elaborate post on that one. All right, so uh, some other things that I had chilling out here, some other... Uh, creations and things that I had kind of abandoned. Um, one, I was working on this uh, wacky junkyard POI for SCAR a while back. Uh, I thought I'd bring it in again and look at it. I kind of like the idea of this, uh, uh, how it's spawned on the train sucks right now, but the idea of this one would be kind of like an open air POI. I would have some loot boxes in here and some bad guys pacing around. You could shoot them up and maybe grab a couple things of loot. Just a, a small you know, no big deal of a POI. Uh, so I might finish this up sometime. It's uh, basically just junk. It's supposed to be like a junkyard. Uh, some of the parts in here were just handcrafted for this, and others are parts of a SCAR creation. Like like this is the uh, the front of the SCAR Raider turned sideways. <laughs> and I just chopped it out of that, that, that ship and added some damage blocks to it just to you know, make some kind of funky looking junkyard. Anyway, no big deal on that one. Um, the other building over here, this was also meant to be a POI, a more of a, like a generator or some kind of industrial power building of some origin. Um, this one I really ought to finish up. I did like the, uh, I did like the block work on it. It uh, totally won't work as a player base again. It's not set up for it. There's nothing right about it on a player base. Would use a, be extremely wasteful, expensive with, a little to no like space to park anything in or anything like that so it would definitely have to be a poi and i probably ought to finish that up and i remember when i stopped working on it i couldn't make up my mind on what faction i wanted this poi to go to uh i then i'm i'm thinking it might work out best as like scar or something like that though i could paint it uh with the scar texturing and have it maybe add some damage blocks and some spiky stuff to it and stuff like that um, I thought originally about making it like an MCR and PRI, or POI, and, uh, but then I didn't want to do any more MCRN because, well, that's part of the Expanse you know, franchise, and I didn't really want to do too much with uh, MCRN after I kind of thought about that a little bit more. Uh, anyway, moving on to the next thing. This was uh, some wacky SV I started a while back. I uh, never did finish this one either. This was I was going to try to build... A larger SV again and that that was the point and idea of this like a higher a high tier combat focused SV and I got to this part and I was unhappy on how it moved and uh, it was gonna be extraordinarily expensive on CPU and kind of big and I sort of abandoned this one too it's just like I, I was basically trying to build a uh, an SV like I did some of the older like the higher tier Mercs like the MX 12 through 18 uh, Mercs, uh, which were all bigger ships, uh, but they just don't work. They just don't work in game. And I was trying to like trying to make this work, and it just again be super high on CPU, um, uh, kind of disappointing on thrust speed. If I did uh, any decent haul materials on it, uh, it just it just kills it. Um, so I sort of abandoned this one too, and just I, after that I was just like, no, nah, I'm just not gonna attempt to try to build any big SVs anymore. Uh, we'll just go with kind of smaller, kind of mid mid-size SVs at, at its tops. Uh, this one was supposed to be a little bit bigger, though. I was trying to make it like a, I don't know, funky, funky, uh, I don't know, just a strange design. Um, so uh, another old, old, old creation I never did finish up either is this uh, big player base over here. Um, it's a little sunken to the ground yet, but this was supposed to be like a big production base, a uh, large hangar, uh, 
it would uh, accommodate furnaces. You got a place to land up, uh, you know, reasonably sized uh, CVs on it as well. Uh, repair stuff. It's got a lot of uh, base defense on it. Would have uh, farms. Uh, the whole ball of wax. Um, and I kind of liked it. I was trying to go with like kind of a sort of something, uh, some kind of imperial sort of design with it. Uh, and this was a long, long time ago as well. Um, but then, uh, you know, it just, the galaxy was in, introduced into the game, the, like the full galaxy, more than the solar system that it originally had. And the idea of having a big base like this, I found kind of counterproductive because it's this, it's this giant galaxy and... You know, if you got this sitting on some planet somewhere, and you're out with your uh, out with your CV flying 500 light years away, and you want to now come back to your base to drop off the loot and repair your ship and grab grab supplies and everything that the base would be for, it's too far away, uh, and it's too annoying to ever get back to. Um, so, typically, what I've been seeing is most people, you know, or a lot of people will just kind of build like a a really quick uh, starter base or spawn something in uh, early game until they get the CV and then they're done with the base and they fly away. Um, and this was like a big expensive ground base that can't move. Um, and that's and that's the problem with it. Um, if the game mechanics would work a little differently, like you could put up some version of a, uh, I don't know, a warp portal or something like that in space. Say, say... Uh, when you get to like, I don't know, level 10 or 15 player level, you could put like a um, uh, portal out of the, in the outer atmosphere of the planet or, or in orbit in the planet. And then you could fly out somewhere out into the galaxy and then put in its matching portal. Uh, and then so you could instantly fly your ship and whatever is in your ship or on your ship or other players in your ship right back to that portal and come back to this planet, do all your business. Uh, and then take back off, fly back through the portal, and end up right where you left off. That would be really cool, and that would make, I think, having a base like this a, uh, a useful thing in game. But as it is, it was kind of like another one of these things that got shot down because of practicality. I mean, I, uh, of course, it could be a nice production base, uh, but it would be a pretty pricey one as well. And I just don't know if there's any good use for that. I don't think there is. It's just it's not the way I've been playing the game. And it seems it's rough with a giant galaxy. You want to go exploring it, and you know, I the you know it encourages you to do that. But then trying to get back is too challenging and too expensive. Uh, all the pentax you got to use. It's not like you can just go and say, hey, plot a course, a warp point from where I am in the galaxy to this planet over here, and it will take care of it for you. No, you gotta you gotta plot out every single point individually, and it's just such a such a problem getting back um, unless of course you got some cycle late game uh, warp drive that can do a lot of light years at once but most of the time you're usually running around 60 light years and that's that's it's just I don't know I, I found it impractical unfortunately I would like something like this to be practical but it needs a game mechanic in there to I think make that happen otherwise they're kind of useless um, and it's a big waste of uh, in-game money. I mean, some people, if you're into a lot of role-playing and stuff like that, it's cool. Um, and I, I can see that, too. But, you know, if you're really just trying to play the game to play the game and to get through the game and, and all that stuff, I, yeah, something like this, I just... It's not practical at all. It's just a lot of a lot of money. Uh, well, a lot, a lot of resources, and it's sitting on a planet. And and then even if you, if you had... Uh, a spaceship and it didn't have like and you, you know you had it filled up with cargo and and stuff like that and it wasn't good enough to land on a, on a planet with gravity and get back off again that that could be another problem so okay so another little project i did start too was a um i don't know if i like this <laughs> i'm trying to like it I, I i keep on modifying it and it's getting a little bit better but here's another minor another sv minor this one here i'm trying a little different approach on um, essentially I kind of wanted to have a, uh, uniform drill pattern. So all the drills are kind of lined up and everything like that. And I was kind of going for the, uh, the roundest look. So I ended up with six drills on this one. Um, but then I, I didn't want the cockpit to be the same as like this, this round thing in the middle. I kind of wanted to mix it up and, and try something different. And that's kind of what this one is to give it a little variety on the miners. Um, so I, I went with this like sloped in, uh, 
glass cockpit design. Basically, kind of because I got inspired again by I like the the, the design of the the bridge on the GigaCore, and I was like, well, let's try that on a on an SV minor and see how it would work out. It's, it's it's kind of strange. I mean, it really is kind of strange. I do like the um, you know. The interior, I think, would be kind of neat, especially once it gets all finished off and everything. You know, you got pretty all right visibility and stuff like that. And I like the slopey design. Uh, you can see all right, and the drills are set up all right. So it's it's. Uh, I tested this too with the, with the uh, the turrets and stuff on it. Again, this this one is meant to be a um, a shielded warp capable uh, SV miner, a little higher capacity. It's running some bigger thrust in it. Uh, stuff like that. I don't exactly know what tier it would fall on yet. Um, I'll try to keep it as low as possible, but it would probably be exceeding tier three. So probably up around tier five or something like that. Um, and again, shield with uh, six drills and uh, I would have to uh, figure out exactly how much capacity it could carry based on the thrusters I'm using. Again, some larger lift thrusters on here too, but it's largely unfinished yet. But I'm just kind of curious of what you guys think about this one. This one was, would also have a drone hatch in it, um, and you can a uh, little place like uh, probably make some deco thing above the uh, the warp drive over here or something like that too, um, and then side entry again. Uh, so I would seal this back area off so you couldn't get in and out of there. But that's great for storing parts and some generators and other things you would need back over here, and you can kind of seal that off pretty good. Um, so I don't mind the uh, the idea of side doorways on it. But uh, this lower mechanism here, obviously, uh, since the top half is different than the bottom half, uh, so you got this slopey section here, so the drills fit in that way. I'm missing a couple blocks there, I think. Um, but the, the bottom half, of course, because of this angle, had none of the same body work to work with. So I was essentially kind of like thinking about like, you know, some of the uh, miners I might have seen out of Star Citizen or something like that, and trying to build this like frame mechanism to hold uh, the drills and in this case a couple thrusters reverse thrusters uh, over there as well as in the these uh, reverse thrusters I am using a better like like these are the one by three plasma thrusters So they are a little higher tier in itself um, And I think uh, where this thing is at don't mind the CPU. I haven't put any CPU blocks in it yet um, but uh, let's See unlock level see what really kind of annoyed me is it is instantly shot this thing up to unlock level 25. I didn't even think you could go, uh, and, and, and don't mind the name. It, it truly was doing exactly what this name said. <laughs> um, but the unlock level is 25. I thought the highest unlock level for an SV was 20. So I don't know what I put on here to, uh, to uh, totally freak out the, uh, the unlock level on it, but it, my intent wasn't to be unlock level 25 on it I wanted it to unlock lower than that but I'm thinking it's because this is an advanced warp drive I think I have a feeling that is what is the the part that is causing it to have the 25 unlock level so that could be changed easy enough anyway I'll probably keep on tinkering with this one again it's not a real big project though it's not a big time-consuming project so to, to talk about the next thing that I think I have now settled on on what I want to do for a next Larger project. I won't say giant project. It's not like uh, gigacore size, but I was thinking about doing. Um, I seen another author do it when I was looking at uh, look at the workshop videos, and I thought that was a pretty good idea, and I think it could be uh, reasonably done. I wanted to do another starter CV, but of a asymmetrical carrier uh, is the idea, um, because I'm kind of looking at the gigacore and getting ideas from that. I kind of want to. Uh, and I think, you know, especially if you're using lighter weight blocks, especially for the uh, the hanger portion of the carrier, um, and then use steel blocks for the asymmetrical part where the player and production and all that stuff would be on the carrier, I think you could make it relatively lightweight and fly okay. Um, so I was thinking about attempting that. Of course, a lot of upgradability. And again, I want, I want a, a ship, even a starter, to have a reasonable amount of extra space for parts because there's there's so many upgrade parts there's so many things to put in these uh, creations now um, building like uh, another wayfarer just isn't gonna isn't gonna cut it uh, it can't hold all the parts and you know I'd like to be able to put in turbines and you know shield parts and stuff later on and also maybe have it do some other functionality uh, so 
that is the general premise and idea of what uh, I think I want to do for the next build. And I'm pro I'll probably start that tomorrow. I'm going to try to record building it uh, so I can uh, put out a video kind of showing you some of the steps on that. And I'm still also doing a lot of R&D into Reforged Eden 2 as well. Um, I'm getting a better idea of things, uh, you know, just kind of uh, converting a couple ships over, building some newer, uh, at least SV creations so far. Um, I'm getting the, the general hang of what's going on with the CPU and the parts um, and things like that. So it's a learning process, and, uh, and I keep on wanting to, like, mix things up, too. It's like I don't want to build the same things over and over again. I feel like I have... Uh, Looking at like this carapace, now this is, you know, it was rebuilt and everything, but the very, very old carapace that it was built from, it's literally the same layout, practically, as like all these, um, a lot of other CVs that I've made, um, especially all the starter CVs and things like that. Very similar layout, uh, same idea with uh, the back part of the ship as a hangar and landing pad up top. Uh, you get to the front part of the ship, it divides up into two floors, um, Usually one of those floors ends up being a farm and the other is four parts and then it goes into a bridge. And that is uh, pretty much the standard format I do on uh, pretty much all these starter CVs. It works, it uh, utilizes the space. Most of them end up being a rectangle, um, which is usually pretty good for uh, the amount of sp uh, space you get versus the blocks used. Uh, so, but it just gets old and boring and it's like, and, and then I thought about building like another just traditional starter CV for Reforged Eden 2, but, uh, looking at the Wafer, uh, ST2, um, it's totally cool right now with Reforged Eden 2. It, it is. It's just like, it works and I don't need to do anything to it. Um, the only thing I would like different on a starter CV is having more places to put parts and the Wafer is too small to handle that. And that's, and that, and that's where the problem lies. Um, it's just got, got to have more room. Again, I was really happy that, uh, I was scared to death when I was first building this Helios and looked at the amount of room that was in each of these engineering areas. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to actually put there? Um, but now I'm really thankful for it because there's new parts and I was able to add in places to put other big parts. And honestly, if I reconfigured the whole area or these rooms in here, I could, you know, these were intentionally built to be, to take up more room um, because I had to fill up this giant like warehouse room on each side of the ship over here. And it was even a struggle with the, with the amount of parts there to really fill that up. Um, but yeah, I'm really thankful it has all those parts now. If there's new parts that come into play too, this thing could handle it. So this is just one ship I do plan on keeping updated uh, quite frequently. So um Hopefully it'll keep on going. It's kind of, you know, it also, you know, it's it's one of those uh, creations that supports the Helios modules. There's a lot of other creations out there that, that, that can do that as well, but definitely want to keep that one up to date. Anyway, th that's kind of where I'm at. I just wanted to get out a general video because I didn't get out any videos the last couple of days. been pretty busy with some other things, um, and just kind of want to tell you where I'm at and what the uh, the future plan uh, build plans are right now. Um, basically, uh, again, attempting... And this thing is totally not finalized. In fact, I might make some major changes to it, um, like uh, this glass front. I do like the idea of the tilted glass, but I think it's, um, I don't know. I think i think it's not, like, optimal. Maybe I should change that around and change the back around a little bit. But uh, I just kind of wanted to get a ballpark idea on, uh, you know, what kind of tier and what, what kind of... Uh, warp capable con uh, you know can do some uh drone combat kind of uh minor um and things like that and uh you know h higher capacity um uh, high gravity would be a thing too and that is something i'm thinking about right now i don't think it would have enough thrust to handle a ton of gravity um i've got only these two lift thrusters over here and it probably would need a little bit more uh power i guess uh if it were to be a high gravity miner but it would probably make more sense if it was especially if it was a higher tier uh so that's i'll keep on looking at that one as well but other than that i guess you, you all have yourself a great day and, and let, let me know your thoughts on some of these things i brought up like the uh the base and stuff like that granted i can't go through the to the game developers and say hey can you add in some some form of town portal for spaceships <laughs> um so it's like stuff like this man i would love i'd love to be able to be able to build big, you know, usable uh, player bases that were, you know, something like this uh, that would do everything. 
Um, but, you know, I just find them to be really impractical with the Galaxy in the game. I like the, of course, I want the Galaxy. That's it's better than a solar system that, that I originally had. But it's just it's too hard to navigate and get around and too expensive and too time consuming to have a stationary object on a planet somewhere uh, be all that useful unless you're kind of RPing it and you're just kind of sticking around a certain area in space and not really ever going too far away. Um, but I think that's kind of self-defeating in a way because it's a big galaxy and you're kind of meant to go out and explore and, you know, see the different sites and the different factions and all that stuff. So anyway, um, you all have yourself a great day and I should be back tomorrow to start a, uh, a SV, or I'm sorry, a uh, starter CV asymmetrical carrier that can hopefully accommodate a lot of future upgrade parts and things like that. I even thought about building this carrier in such a way like the Janus, um, and, and when, I, when I bring that up, uh, that means that I could strip away all thrusters from it, um, or all CV parts, but build it as a CV, where you spawn it in, and it's cheap, and it's like base price, um, and you don't have to have a high unlock level to get it in game, and then you use it as a player base, and then you upgrade it, um, eventually adding thrusters and more generators, and and all the CV parts to it to make it flyable, and then you use it from there. And that, that I think, would be kind of a neat concept idea. Um, I don't think whatever I'm going to do, though, is going to support any Helios modules because, honestly, they're just gigantic. And, you know, starting on as a starter, if you if you took a, a storage module and you hooked it up to it and it, had, it was half full of storage, there's no way it would get off the ground. <laughs> So that's kind of a problem with that. If they weren't so big, and maybe that's, you know, when I when I was building the, the, the original Helios, I wanted a module that could be the size of basically a starter CV. Um, and that's kind of what I ended up with. And build a starter CV out of it uh, later on, too, being, being the Janus. Um, so other than that, um, well, <laughs> I guess you all have yourself a great day. I will talk to you later.